I'd like to introduce you to James Pierce Connolly. Hi. Hi, this is Desiree Gazetta. I work for the Nerd Element. Cool. I to, hi, I wanted to ask you about the Masked Singer. Um, what has been the most challenging production for you on that show and what has been the most fun? Oh, wow. Okay. That's a big question. Um, I would say that the most challenging production was the actual production itself in season one. Um, if you just imagine sort of my journey with the show was, uh, I heard about the show. I was very excited. Ooh, a big, a big Fox stage show that involves music. This is so cool. And when I learned about the show and it was told to me that, you know, it's, um, it, it, it's a format that started in Asia and Thailand and Korea. You should check it out on YouTube. And this is a show where, uh, celebrities are going to dress up in big outrageous co costumes and you're going to guess um, who they are. And so there was a moment of, you know, what is my career? You know, what, what, is, <laughs> what, what is this? And then, then there's a follow-up moment of like, you know, it's my job to sort of make this transferable to the audience and make it cool. And what are, what are these costumes like? And, and, and so there was a, a lot of discussions on how do we make that for an American audience. And this is the most challenging and the most rewarding because looking at superheroes and how, uh, how Spider-Man and um, Batman and all these Marvel characters can become super cool to audiences was an approach on how to take Mass Singer with these costumes and look at them as sort of superheroes and what did that, what did their world look like? So for backstage, I studied Batman's, the Batcave and Batman's lair and where he hung up all those costumes in backstage was a very transferable point for design for me. And then the stage really was birthed out of Burning Man and Coachella and opera. And so you could get these, it sounds crazy, but like these sort of superheroes that were um, that their their costumes were really like appreciated on like the sort of operatic stage. And so ultimately that has been the biggest challenge as I look back on the show. From here on out, it's just been fun. You know, designing clues and performances and understanding, you know, I don't, I actually don't know who the celebrities are. They keep the, all the secrecy down to like a very handful of people. Um, but trying to guess and as well as embrace those characters and make background stories to those characters is probably just, it's just so much fun. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, sorry, I, I feel like I'm about to derail the conversation because I want to ask about something you did in the past pre-COVID. Sure. That's okay. And it's about your work on The Kids Are All Right. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was, just, I was just curious about how you uh, went about creating that world. And I guess to tie it into the COVID thing, how you would go about creating that world now? It's ages ago, isn't it? Um, yeah, it seems like it seems like forever ago. Yeah, yeah can't believe people will even remember that movie still. Um, it's a great movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> it was a good movie. It was like, who knew it was going to be Oscar nominated? Though, to be honest with you, yeah. but that's, all of a sudden, I did it. I did it in a couple of months. To be, uh, they asked me to do all the prep uh, design work for a brilliant designer, Julie Berghoff, who we're friends now. Um, and we had a nice relationship thereafter for a while while I was an art director. Essentially, I was brought in a little a little sort of parachute style. Um, they needed somebody to come in and help them pre -viz a lot of their uh, build elements. And uh, Julie gave me the responsibility of putting together a lot of ideas and design ideas and pre -viz for WYSIWYG, the bar, his bar. It was mm -hmm. uh, built out of a train station down in Silver Lake. and I. Uh, built it all out, out the patio, and didn't get as much camera time as I wanted, but it got enough um, in the interior. And uh, I got it because I was really fluent in 3D, um, and they needed, they needed it bad. And this was, God, 2006, 2000, maybe even, I don't even know. And so <laughs> the 3D world was just kind of, you know, it was a little rough and, and crude and people were generally still faxing back then, you know, in production and penciling things out. And so I came in and I built everything out in 3D. All, all of WYSIWYG, all of the houses, um, built their little homes and could work with Julie on 
being three, three dimensionally inside and then pulling out construction plates. And so I prepared the show and got it all ready for the shoot. When it came time to the shoot, they pared it down because, because of the budget to just a very, very small staff. And so it was great to see on camera. It was wonderful. And then who knew it got an Oscar nomination from that. Um, so I was really excited. Uh, it was a different experience for me uh, from my general reality world back then. Um, and I brought a lot of appreciation back to reality when I did that movie because I realized, you know what, what we're doing in reality television or variety television, but mostly back then it was like reality, was is we're really still telling the story through an environment. Why wouldn't we put some thought process into this? If Julie Berghoff is gonna make a fun little house for these characters, we can make the same choices in a reality show. Why not? Why can we make, we could be, we could take this medium seriously. So there was like a little bit of a mind shift from that show. So I keep it a little close to my heart, but it was a quick one and I uh, didn't realize it was gonna be such a hit. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Reyes.